Check out that recent rally in financials. You can see it there right at the end of the chart, really. It's one of the best performing sectors over the last month. Just uh, a bit away from that, uh, what would be a new 52-week high. Joining us now with her 2024 outlook for the banks is Erica Najarian. She's the analyst at UBS. Erica, um, can they continue this bit of momentum they've suddenly established here towards the end of the year as they move into and deeper into 2024? I think they could continue the rally into the end of the year, but I think it's going to be a pretty dry January for the stocks, to be honest. So the market got really excited that we've hit peak rates and now we're pricing in 150 basis points of rate cuts. But what the market seems to be forgetting is that, number one, these banks are actually largely asset sensitive, which means that it's positive for earnings when rates go up. And so, therefore, when rates go down, the opposite is true. And so in January, as we get outlooks from the bank management teams themselves that include the forward curve, I think you could see consensus estimates move down and throw a little bit of cold water into this rally. Uh, and so given that, and we should point out all the banks, all the big banks other than J.P. Morgan are down ever so slightly so far in trading this morning. Uh, given that, what are your sort of names that you think are going to be able to perform well despite it? Yeah, so this, despite it is, is exactly the phrase that we need to think about. And that's where Wells comes into mind, right? Wells Fargo has things going on for it other than just dependency on macro. You know, the story, the earnings story there is not dependent on, you know, what, how many cuts the Fed has in store or what kind of loan growth that we have. I think that a lot of what they're doing is continuing to remediate the regulatory issues as well as investing back into their business so that their revenue growth is a little bit better than peers and their fee generation is somewhat in line with peers. So we really like Wells Fargo because it does have a self-help component story, and we like the franchise underneath the surface. Are they, are they ever going to get the green light from the Fed to remove the threshold? Sarah, I know as much as you. So, you know, it's been a guessing game. I think the last time, I mean, when they got the asset cap, the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl, right? So it'll be very interesting if we get something, you know, out of, um, you know, the Fed. But to be quite frank, since it's an election year, I'm not sure if 2024 is the year. But what I like is that we're seeing continued progress at Wells. It's hard for us to guess and price into the stock, that asset cap being lifted. But I do like the progress that we're seeing there. Uh, on regionals, it doesn't seem like you're convinced because you've got mostly neutrals on all the regional banks after a tough year and a big comeback in the last few weeks. Why? So I think there are a few headwinds for the regional banks still. So they're much more dependent on interest income than the rest of the money centers. So not only do you have to think about the impact of rate cuts, but you have to think about loan growth as well. And we think loan growth is going to be weak. And even if we get a much better economy, a soft landing, a Goldilocks next year, Banks are no longer a perfect transmission mechanism for economic growth, given how much the non-banks have taken in terms of market share. And keep in mind that we have regulatory, you know, headwinds that are, you know, a, an overhang for that kind of growth. That being said, where I could be absolutely wrong in terms of, you know, staying on the sidelines with regional banks is if the market, and especially would the banks start pricing in election results that would favor a Republican win in November, because I think that the one thing that could really light a fire under the regional bank stocks, especially, is a Republican victory in November. Uh, why? Because I think what you're going to start pricing in is two things. One, that the proposals for stricter capital rules could be delayed significantly or even softened by a reissue of the proposal. And second, the hope that consolidation come back, comes back significantly.